So it's Danny Flexen here for Seconds Out. Delighted to be joined by unbeaten Super Bowl's fate, Jack McGann. Jack, how you doing, mate? I'm good, thanks, mate. Yourself? Yeah, very good. Thank you. Um, you've kind of made a bit of history, or recent history at least, in that you're the only non-heavyweight fight, or one half of the only non-heavyweight fight, on the big Fury and Garnu card in a couple yeah. of weeks. Um, I guess, first of all, just tell us how that came about. Well, a lot of right page, right time. Good bit of luck, and um, it was just it was just down to my manager Alfie Warren, um, Spencer Brown, probably the biggest the biggest part of it, and then all them put the, them two with with me sponsor the power of one put the reds together and and got me on on on, on to it. But as well, the origin the origi it originated from it's Francis Ngannou and Ghana and MMA fighter fighting Tyson, obviously. So a lot of questions we're getting asked, can, can MMA guys boxing? I obviously started off in MMA and, and now I'm boxing. So it was sort of, well, I was like, well, I'm here. I'm, I'm doing okay. And that's how we got our foot in the door sort of thing. And, and yeah, it, it originated from from that dynamic. And Spencer Brown, who you mentioned there, obviously works closely with Tyson Fury. How well do you know Tyson? I don't I don't really have thoughts on him. I, I made my debut on his big comeback fight when 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 he went missing and he come back and he and he fought in the um, in the MEN. I was on that that was my debut fight so I, I I seen him a little bit there but I've never really had a one to one with him. Do you know what I mean? Apart from being just a, a fan. But um And when the yeah. idea was first put to you to be on this card, did you know that your opponent was going to be Roberto Duran Jr., of course a son of a legend? I can't think it it I don't think so. Maybe. Do you know what? He, he he used to get managed by my management. Oh. So I'm pretty sure, even if it was just for a half an hour thought or it was a question back and forth, it was never really like, this is happening. But I'm, I'm sure we tried to make a fight. It was just an idea a while ago for, for some kind of title. And then it, it didn't happen. So it, it was it was straightforward. That, that's how we got to it. But... Um, when it was all signed off, and I was like, right, I'm 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 on that bill. I'm fighting with Basil Jiman's son. Um, I'm the only I'm the only non heavyweight fight. It was like someone someone pinched me, you know. <laughs> I was gonna say it must feel quite surreal because you're no stranger to the bright lights in the MMA world. But as a boxer thus far, you haven't got to British title level just yet. You, you're nearly there, but now you're on this yeah. mega event opening Riyadh season. Yeah, well, they, they say don't they? If you go anywhere in the world. No matter the, yeah, the the smallest corner, the, the the last place you'd expect to see people, there'll be a, there'll be a scouser there, and <laughs> I'm just filling, I'm filling that void. Do you know what I mean? Are you a, a fan of uh, Roberto's dad, the the great Roberto Duran Senior? Yeah, I am. It, just his fight style and, and uh, how exciting he was. I, I, I don't know how you you couldn't be, you, even if you're not a boxing guy or a fighting guy. If you put him, if you put him on the screen, pe people will watch. Well, I'm assuming that won't lead to any uh, sympathy or empathy with his son. No, I'll have to if I want to get a picture with his dad. I'll have to try and get it before because he might not want to give it to me afterwards. <laughs> no, he might not, and he might he might not want to take pictures with his son either afterwards. Yeah. But let's let's wait and yeah. see. Um, yeah. So you've told us how you got on the bill. Did it? It's kind of what were you planning before this came up as an opportunity? Because it seemed like you're on the cusp of either an English or a British title shot, perhaps. I was planning. I've had a funny year. I've had so many things fall through, and and it got to the point in in July. I was like, right, I'm, I'm just going, um, going on holiday. So I'm I'm going to crash. Do you know what I mean? I, I've made a lot of improvements and everything else, but as far as fight fights and plans go, it was like we get right to it, and then, um, it just fall through. And an example, um, in, well, well, in the past twelve months, I've I've applied for the central area. I was meant to fight for that last year. The, the guy pulled out last minute. I applied for the English a couple of times, even though I won. I also won an English eliminator last year, and um, that never led to getting my hands on the title or, or getting a shot. That so, against John Brennan. Yeah, so um, the the, the we, we started campaigning for the British, and obviously I, I'm I'm quite I, I think I'm number six or seven at my weight, so um, I've got I've got me 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 validation for it, but. Yeah, we, we got it got to the point where Josh Kelly vacated mm. and they made Mason Cartwright and, and Sweet. And that they, they was an eliminator and then it was me and Lee Cutler. They come out in the same circulars. So the plan was obviously 
the winner, the winner of our two fights fight for the vacant title. Yeah. Lee Cutler said he wants to go for the English instead and wants to go a different way. So then Anthony and Cartwright fall for the vacant belt. And I just sort of also Lee Cutler's now got he's fighting for the vacant English title. And I so so them two everybody got like um <laughs> a next step and I just sort of got left like, well, nice one, do you know what I mean? So I think that's I, I'm I'm mandatory now. Because that that's what was supposed to happen. That was the way it was meant to it was meant to go. Because if 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 I fought Lee Cutler, me and Anthony would be fighting for the vacant belt next, whenever it's whenever it's going to be. So, so yeah, it, it's been it's been a funny year. But the the plan was the English, and then when that when that we couldn't get nowhere with that, it was with the British. So, so a big performance out in Riyadh, and then it could be ending the year or starting next year with that British title shot. Yeah, hundred percent. And then it's 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 like the 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 story I've had for the past year or so. Things fall through. Me, me head's shocker. I'm sitting out. Me head in my hands like, what what do we do here? It was all lining up lovely and and it fell off. But then it ends up. It all works out and ends up in a well better position than we could have imagined before. Was it ever like this in your MMA um, tenure? Did, did you ever struggle to get fights? No, on, honestly, MMA. Is the most straightforward um business in the world. It's just you're fighting him, so you're there. Nice one. That's it. And unless you get unless you get a pull out, and then they always seem to sort it. But in my sixteen, in my sixteen professional M- MMA fights, I think one fight didn't happen, and that was only because um and a, a, a kid he was fighting on a promotion called Bama. Mm. And someone died, couldn't wait. Or he died in the fight because of a bad weight cut. So then they introduced brain scans as standard because he didn't have to do them. So the whole MMA um, business side of it got changed. It was massive. That's the only time I, I didn't fight. And compared to boxing, it's just like the, the politics in boxing. I just can't I can't believe it. I'm used to it now. Like, But I think I've missed out on. Couldn't even tell you. If I should even think, even late, late, late pullouts and... Covid and everything else, I've missed so many fights. I could, I could have had. Should have, I should have had about twenty by now. Did you ever consider going back to MMA because of that side of boxing? Yeah, it crossed your mind a few times. The plan, the plan origin- originally was to jump, jump between. Covid got in the way of that because I didn't fight for two years, and you just can't really make keep momentum going with, with, with both of them. So it's got to the point now where, um, the way it has happened would be. For for a, for a good deal, and it'd be sort of a crossover, but but the other way. Had you ever done? Sorry, sorry. No, that's alright. It's my fault. Um, have you ever? Did you ever do any boxing, like amateur boxing or anything, before you went into MMA? No, none. But um, I, I, I've competed in I've competed in every single in, in pretty much every discipline, combat sport, except except boxing. I've done jiu-jitsu comps, I've done judo ones, I've done Thai boxing fights, kickboxing fights, or every everything you can think of. But just never boxed, even though it was, it was the one I probably was the, the most natural. Nat, I took I took to it naturally. But the, the the funny part is, it was like in our gym, the Wolf's there in, in my dad's gym. We was always our guys in MMA always with top strikers. We we we'd, we'd box in the MMA fights, and the reason was we'd get top boxing coaches to teach the lads. So even though I never fought. Um, amateur. I got trained off amateur coaches, and I've sort of got that amateur style because that's what works best in MMA. That that's all the point scoring, not point scoring, but um, faster in and out because, but because of the equipment change in the small gloves, that's what that's what works best in in the MMA fights. And you mentioned your dad there, of course, Anthony McGann, the owner, yeah. founder of the Wolves there, out in Widnes, legendary uh, MMA gym. Produced the likes of Michael Bisping, Czech Congo, and so on. What was it like growing up in that environment? Looking back now, it was it, it was mad. But when I was in it, it was just let's go to dad's work. You know what I mean? But I think I think subconsciously I took so much in, and obviously with me dad being a manager as well, and I, I've I've seen a lot of things that people, I've known a lot of things. Look how far as a fighter, what we'll, what we'll fight them on the arse. Like blowing up in weight, not acting proper, all all, all little bits that I, I know messed a lot of fighters up because they went a lot further than what they did. Do stuff outside outside living, you know. But what? what I think is that 
sorry, but I think as well, it, uh, as much as I can say, oh, just going to dad's work, I was surrounded by, um, I'd watched like Congo and Rampage Jackson, and, and they'd be doing these these fight camps where like the hundreds of thousands are getting spent on it, and, and it's the best coaches in it, the best sparring partners, um, chefs, nutritionists, all that. And that was like, I, I, I've seen what, what top level looks like. That was sort of my standard in a way. So I've got a high, high standard when it comes to pre- preparing for the fight. And what made you decide to make the switch? You were what, 24 years old when you went to pro boxing? Yeah. I was I was fighting out in a, um, in a Russian promotion. I had five fights out there, fighting monsters. And I loved it. They treated me, they treated me great, but... I had, I think my second to last fight was, I think at that point I was a bit too young for what, what we were going for um, as far as how mature I was in my head and, and, and I wasn't quite ready for it but the growth that I got out of that was was massive and I wouldn't change it um, but I think my second to last fight I, I thought I'd weight lower than I usually thought that and I got robbed on a decision and I'd just say me, like, like without being bitter everyone, I, I won but they gave it to the other guy to give us a devotion in Russia, um, and it put it broke me heart. I was I was crushed by it, and and then my last fight was just was just a complete mess. We had we had a stage fall through on the way out and all that on on the way to the to the ring and everything and everything leading up to it. And then my gym was sort of dying. Like I I, I, I it was looking like I was gonna have to have a new gym. Um, start we were done with Russia, so it was like start again right across the board. And and I think the option was well let let let's let let's change over to boxing. Also, we just had McGregor and Mayweather, mm. so that really helped it as well. I think maybe it wouldn't have happened if it wasn't for that. But but that's why it happened then. Now, a lot of people have been asking this question about the main event Fury and Garner, and I think you're probably better placed than most to answer. Given you had a striking background, you were known as a stand up fighter in MMA. <laughs> How challenging was the transition to boxing? Well, I I can't speak for anyone else, obviously, but for me, it was, I'd always spar four boxers in the preparation for my MMA fights. Like, I, I used to spar, I'd, I'd, spar, I'd spar Martin Murray, who's now my coach, funnily enough, but um, I, I, I could do it, I knew the difference. However, it, it was hard to see because it was only over. Um, I'd only ever do four rounds. I don't think I've ever done six but in, in, in that dynamic because it's three fives in MMA. But the biggest the, the biggest thing I seen was when you go up in the rounds, that's when I really seen it. That's when I really seen a big a, a big jump. So I think one of Ngarnu's biggest challenges, apart from being in front of the best heavyweight in the world, it's gonna be when it gets to eight, nine, ten. It's only doing a ten RD. But I do but but but, but, but I would say I can't really remember now because it was that long ago, but I just remember after about 10 months of it, it was like, oh, it's it's clicks now. I'm, I finally feel like I've got everything. And you, you've you even heard Nganu say it. Um, the first couple of weeks he was training, his shoulders were just on fire because he, he's two more punches in that week than he has in a, in a whole fight camp. So it, it is different, and, and I would say, um, after, after sitting here now, after being experienced in both, they are sure the 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 um apples and oranges you can't you can't compare them they're completely different. There's things you can take from both, but they're just com- completely different. And 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 it's most of, mo- most of the things people don't think of like um in MMA I've had plenty of fights where for fifteen minutes you can kick knee elbow each other do everything and at the end of it there hasn't been a mark on the pair of us because if one one just wants to fight a certain way then you can, and because you could because there's grappling involved. If you're in a good position on the floor, the ref won't move you for three minutes if you've got someone's back or whatever. So, um, not that there's places to hide, but there's places where you, you're not getting it because there's other things happening. You're also in a 30-foot cage, standing in a kicking range, where um, there's just space to space to move, whereas in boxing, all that's happening is just someone's hitting you. That's it. It's horrible. <laughs> just someone's hitting you the whole time, as long as the fifth. And whatever they just keep coming, and it's just damage, damage, damage. That's why you see so many boxers compared to MMA fighters who, who've got um, brains damage later in life. You don't really see it in, in MMA, really. But there's disadvantage, but there's, there's also 
advantages advantages as well. Like and Garner will be good at covering distance because he's used to it. And mm. um, you talk about in MMA, you get so many different styles all the time. So you won't be thrown off by anything anything new. Whereas in boxing, you get someone who just who does something slightly different to a traditional guy, and it's like you 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 think he's doing something he's doing. Not to it, but I'd say his biggest challenge will be it'll be, um, it'll be the range and the length of the fight. Is that from a conditioning perspective, or is it that the longer you go into a fight, the more your natural habits come out? Probably, probably a bit of both, but it's just I, I just know for me, it's it took me a while to, um, it took me a while to get used to to the more range. And then, funnily enough, now I actually get better as the rounds go on, but. Originally, it was a shock, and it's probably a mental thing or whatever. But it's just, it's just so different to what he's to what he's used to. I mean, is it with Ngannou? Although he'll say he's coming to win and all that, is it more to to survive to do the rounds with Fury? That's kind of an achievement in itself, isn't it? Mm, yeah. So no, I don't think so. I think I think he, he saves himself better if he, if he go if he goes for it and gets stopped. Then, then you know, I imagine. No one can no one can really say anything then. Whereas if you if like it's like Charlo and Canelo the other week and all that 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 that, that levels are different, but all all, all these others slack of everyone saying he was just in there to survive. Mm. Um so I can't I, I don't know, but I, I my thing on it is you you can't you can't call it till you see but no no one's seen him box. You don't know what's gonna happen. Like he, he's known he's had this boxing fight coming up for the, for a long time. He's been he's been fighting that even though he hasn't boxed before, and you can see him in pads and say what you want to say. But he's um a top level athlete, world class. He's he's fought on big massive shows with loads of pressure on him in the past, and he's switched his head onto boxing for the for, for uh, how a couple of months now. So you don't you don't know what's gonna happen until till he turns up t- until the night until the bell goes. You know, so. I just, I just say, don't, don't, don't write them off. Don't, don't, don't just go in there like, oh, he's going to be awful and it's going to be a whitewash. And on an all heavyweight card, lots of big punches and so on. How do you go about stealing the show? Well, I don't know. I, I, I tend to steal the show <laughs> most times that I'm on. So, um, as long as I go out there and and, and if it, if I stop if I stop if I stop you on. The big shot, well, I can say, can I? Well, I'm on the heavyweight card because I punch like a heavyweight, so well, there you go. Yeah, they might start putting you against actual heavyweights next one, though, so <laughs> you've got to be know. careful about that. Yeah. <laughs> Great stuff, mate. Really appreciate your time. When are you um flying out? A week, a week tomorrow, so, so the Tuesday, the 24th. Oh, yeah, because there's not much time difference, is there? I suppose. No, it's only, it's only three hours ahead, so we'll, we'll get there. Do we have to do that week and then and then I'm back to Sunday, so it's just in, in and out. All right, so for anyone out there who wants to know a bit more about you or leading up to the fight as well, how can they find you on social media? I am. My social media, Instagram is jackmagan 9 My Twitter is jackmagan 93 Great stuff. Mate, very best of luck um, out there and we will be watching it. Can't wait to see it. Oh, thanks so much, Dan. I'm looking forward to it. Thanks so much.